Tens of thousands of homeowners can't pay their mortgages. And with interest rates going up, can we afford to bail them out? Hello and welcome to Primetime. Later in the programme, the latest depressing development in the ongoing failure to properly care for people with intellectual disabilities. We'll be looking back at the life of one woman with autism who has spent 25 years in state institutions. First though tonight, the crippling problem of debt and the mounting mortgage arrears facing thousands of homeowners. With interest rates set to rise, this financial nightmare can only get worse. Well, we went out in the streets earlier today to see what people think of a possible government plan to help those in serious mortgage arrears. The idea of bailing out people at this time is a very good idea. I think in the longer term it would have to be looked at. I feel sorry for people who have 100% mortgages. They probably shouldn't have been given 100% mortgages in the first place. But I certainly wouldn't feel happy about bailing them out from my tax either. I don't think it's a bailout for the average householder because they were caught in artificial, like paying for artificial prices in the boom years. I think the problem again is why should uh, the average Joe so pay higher taxes to bail out or suffer the consequence of other people's actions? I would like to help anybody that I possibly could who has difficulties paying their bills and that kind of thing. But uh, at the moment I, I'm, I'm paying enough in, 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 in taxes and all the rest of it just to keep going. Clearly a fair amount of concern there on the streets about the plan and later on we'll be looking at how much interest rates are likely to go up by and who's going to be worst hit. First though, what can someone actually do right now if they face losing their home? The government says it will draw up this plan to help but how will it actually work? Who will qualify? And as we pour billions into the banks, can we actually afford it? Paul Murphy has this report. Once upon a time in Ireland, the economy was thriving and property prices were soaring. Money was plentiful and the more banks lent, the more people could borrow. And so the cycle began. But that's a chapter that's well and truly over. In the last 18 months, Irish taxpayers have given a handout to the richest in the land. For developers and builders, banks and bank shareholders, there are tens of billions of euro to fund NAMA and recapitalisation. But what about the little guy struggling to pay his mortgage? On Sunday, Communications Minister Eamon Ryan said new measures to help such homeowners will be introduced by next summer. I didn't set out to have mortgage arrears. I didn't set out to not pay my mortgage. I wanted to buy the house and I wanted to have somewhere secure to live for the rest of my life. It wasn't something that I had planned. Um, and I think that maybe if the fact that I did fall in hard times, things happen. Um, you know, there should be some sort of safety net there for you. There's 26,000 mortgages in serious arrears at the moment, greater than six months. The vast majority of them, 17,000 uh, or more, are greater than six months in arrears, and about 6,500 are actually 12 full months in arrears. So we do need something, whether it becomes uh, a NAMA for the little person remains to be seen. The government's response to the growing mortgage crisis has been slow compared to its urgency in helping the banks. When banks faced a funding crisis 16 months ago, the government decided overnight to guarantee over 400 billion euro of their assets and liabilities. But for mortgage holders in trouble, there has been little action. The renewed programme for government back in October the 10th, so now we're looking at nearly four months ago, um, announced measures to uh, protect homeowners having difficulty with their mortgage arrears. But announcements without follow-up, um, you know, we've, we've unfortunately had that before. Now, there is one difference here. The Minister is suggesting that an expert group be set up um, to investigate the extent of the problem. He's also talking about more than mortgage arrears. He's talking about bankruptcy and insolvency laws been considerably out of date. Among the government's possible suggestions for helping people in arrears are reducing interest rates, extending loan periods or rolling up interest, or a bank taking a share of a house or even taking it over and doing a leaseback scheme with the borrower's rent payments coming off the loan. The sale and leaseback is favoured by Grace, who took out a €465,000 loan over 40 years in 2008 with a subprime lender. She fell behind on her loan repayments after an accident forced her out of work. 
She is now back working, but is €22,000 in arrears. She is repaying €2,800 per month, but even at that, her arrears are still increasing by €300 per month. When I got the loan, the house was valued at 540000 and that was in 2008. And I know some houses around the area have sold recently for 280000 to 310000 and that was in the last six to eight weeks. So there's been a huge drop in it. The value of the house now would probably be about 340000 and I owe 460, roughly. The government says it will also review our bankruptcy laws to make it easier for people to escape from debt. Irish bankruptcy laws are punitive. In 2008, there was less than one personal bankruptcy per month here, compared to 10,000 per month in Britain. And unlike some other countries, mortgage borrowers here are typically personally liable for any debt remaining after the house is sold. The one option that is fundamentally missing uh, is that of making a situation where the person can get out of the debt. And that's really the main thing that not only is lacking in the mortgage market, but lacking in the entire debt market within this country. If we had a situation where a person could say, listen, I'm bankrupt, and, and they can only be chased for up to five years, then people wouldn't be so flagrant with credit. Those are things that will actually prevent this from happening again. What we're doing at the moment is, is basically taking someone who's got a cut artery and trying to put a band-aid on it. Even if they would give me the option of maybe putting the arrears onto the end of the mortgage term, I didn't refuse to pay them. I just couldn't pay them because I was out of work. The fact is I have a mortgage until I'm 78. I don't think I'll still be working at 78. And I really don't know whether I'll still have a home in the next year or two. Debt settlement legislation is the norm right across Europe. And that involves people trying to pay to the best of their ability over a defined period of time. But it does also involve, in return, a write-off of unsecured debt. And, you know, the negative equity situation does need to be dealt with. Perhaps overseas schemes to help people struggling with their mortgage could be adapted for use in Ireland. The Home Affordable Modification Programme in the US, for example, concentrates on reducing the instalment to a specific percentage of the person's gross income. Now in the US it's 31% of gross income um, and that involves a combination of mechanisms. One, reducing the interest rate down to a, a minimum of 2%, uh, where that doesn't bring the monthly instalment down below or down to 31%, then the possibility of extending the term also kicks in. Our mortgage crisis will grow. House prices are already down over 40% from peak and the ESRI believes a 50% decline would push one in four Irish households into negative equity. Solutions to this problem will not come easy and they won't come cheap. I don't know why taxpayers should have to, to fork out to save people uh, when they acted prudently, but we've done that for our banks, we're doing that for our government. By extension, we're going to end up doing it for everybody until we reach a point where there's no more money to bail out anybody. I'm not asking them to wipe the debt out. I just want to be able to pay it back and at least not have the, the constant pressure that's there all the time of the fact that they may still be able to take my home away. If the banks would, could buy it back or the government could come to some arrangement with them, I've no problem paying it back. But I just need some breathing space. Paul Murphy reporting there. Nolene Blackwell, that case there of Grace, I mean, it's shocking. Is that extreme? Would you be seeing that on a daily basis? Grace's case is unfortunately not extreme. Um, that's a case, a fairly ordinary case now, of someone who took out a loan over a massive period of time, which was going to have a huge interest content in it. So what she was doing was buying a very expensive loan at the outset, in a very expensive house. Um, and then something that happens a lot of people happen to her she got sick somebody gets sick somebody loses a job these are the things that set um, the, the ball rolling and the arrears rising and the, the problems then start to accumulate so unfortunately that's a lot more common than we'd like to see but the other thing that I, I thought about grace that is becoming quite common is that most people aren't asking for a bailout they're just mm. asking for different systems for more flexible systems to be put into place to give more options. People contact us in FLAC and they say, 
what can we do? And we say, actually, your options are extremely limited at the moment because the law was last changed in